it looks like most of our participants are with us. So Dill, if you want to turn on your camera as well, we will get started more officially. We'll start just with some uh, welcome and introductions. My name is Kim Goff. I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. I'm a project team member for the South Asian Canadian Legacy Project, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more. I I was born on Treaty 6 and I grew up on Treaty 8. Um, my parents were settlers there. My dad was born in England and my mom was born in Saskatchewan. Uh, and for the last 14 years, I have lived on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people in what's now Victoria, British Columbia. Dill. Oh. Did we just lose you, Dill? I saw you there. Oh, for sorry. I just forgot to unmute. <laughs> um, I'm Dill McDonough. I'm a teacher librarian with the Surrey School District at Martha Curry Elementary. Um, I work, play, and learn on the Kwantlen, um, Samiamu, and other Coast Salish peoples territory. Um, I was made aware of this project and asked to participate by a friend, Serene Sadra, who is a faculty of education, education coordinator at SFU. Um, and I'm just so thankful to be part of this project. Um, I feel it's important to ensure that all our students feel that their culture and identity is recognized in an authentic manner. Um, all the lesson plans that are created for Saffron Threads, uh, which we'll be discussing later, um, were created by South Asian educators. I collaborated with Rapinder Rai, who is a kindergarten teacher in Abbotsford, and uh, we were responsible for creating lessons for kindergarten to grade three. Um, and I hope that the, these resources will provide supports needed to reflect our multicultural heritage and acknowledge the positive contributions that the South Asian community has made to our society. Um, during the planning, I wondered how these lessons would um, be promoted to BC teachers. And I was really pleased to see that um, this platform, the BCTLA conference was being used as a platform to advertise Saffron Threads um, because as teacher librarians, we have access to our entire school community and we are some of the best collaborators within our school. And hopefully we will promote these lessons with our staff. Cheers. I wanted to use the hand clap uh, emoji, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, that's so well said. Thank you. Thank you, Dill. Um, we want to just get folks using the chat and get you started here. Um, we've got a, ooh, a Zoom poll, I think I've got to launch here. Let me see if I can launch my poll. If I can't launch my poll, oh, there it is. All right. So the poll is from having a day. This poll should pop up on your screen. It's asking which South Asian food do you most enjoy or would you most like to try? So there's a bunch of pictures there on the screen. Hopefully you're able to see them. Oh, we're getting doses. Samosas are taking an early lead. Oh, butter chicken makes an appearance. Momos, mm. one other person in me loved the momos. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too early to get to lunchtime. But almost everyone here voted now. All right. Oh, we're almost at 100%. There we are, 93% have voted. The winner is butter chicken. <laughs> uh, so there's one there. And maybe there's some food we forgot to list. So you could use it in the chat. Uh, we have a comment here in the chat that I'll share the results so you can see. We have a comment here in the chat that they've never tried momos, but would like to. I know them as a Tibetan dish. They're like a lovely little dumpling, um, really yummy to, to dip and to eat. So uh, anybody uh, have a dish here that we didn't include? Because really when we're talking about South Asian Canadians, uh, we're, that includes people from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan and the Maldives. So we don't have all of that food here pictured. So maybe there's something else you notice or you would like. All right. 
We're going to move or we'll get our session started uh, today. We're going to give you an overview of the South Asian Canadian Legacy Project, a summary of the Learning Resource Project, and then it's going to be over to you to review and discuss our activity plans and give us some feedback before they go live. The South Asian Canadian Legacy Project is led by the remarkable Dr. Satwinder Baines. She's the director of the South Asian Studies Institute at the University of Fraser Valley. And the overarching goal of the project is to showcase the community's resilience in the face of systematic historical injustice, racism and discrimination, and to contribute to creating a welcoming and inclusive province. Funding from the provincial government has led to the development of six projects and that will result in increased education materials and to facilitate access to the history of South Asian Canadians. And we'll highlight those six projects next. So the digital archive is going to bring together artifacts, photos, texts, and oral histories all into one easy to access database. So no more searching five different museum databases to try to find uh, what uh, an image that you're looking for. Uh, historic sites, there are 15 different historic sites that have been identified as significant to South Asian Canadians and plans are underway to add additional signage and collaborate with other communities to add new signage in some cases to increase awareness of these different sites. Uh, the BC Labour Heritage Centre is developing a website and a book about South Asian Canadians in BC's labour history. And another book is going to be developed for social histories, so a South Asian Canadian book on social history. So a great um, resource for older, uh, for adults and for older learners. For everyone, a traveling exhibit and outreach kit are being co-developed with us here at the Royal BC Museum. It's going to be a small exhibit that will be able to travel to communities from across British Columbia. And well, we're going to, and what we're going to take a closer look at today are the lean, are the learning resources, and those are almost complete. Sorry if that popped up on your screen there. Here's Shayla; she's joining us as well. So, the learning resource project. This project uh, is going to launch in March of 2022. And there's eight to 10 activities right now, but we're hoping to be able to expand it in the coming years. We've, uh, with discussions with our project team, we've, we've been talking about how it's important for this site to remain uh, new and to have uh, be refreshed with content as time goes on. So there's talking, we're talking about how, what plans could be to continue to add to those resources. It's going to feature activities uh, from across K to 12, and those will be focused in grade bands. So there's K to 3, which Dill mentioned she worked on, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, and then 10 to 12. Uh, some of the activities we've talked about, including our timeline card game uh, that would help students learn about events in South Asian Canadian history uh, and different activities for different areas of the curriculum. So why this is so exciting and important, Dill, you were, you were hinting at it a little earlier in our introductions, but do you want to say a little bit more about um, the importance of this resource? Um, <clears throat> well, it's authentic. First of all, it's been created by uh, South Asian educators from BC. Um, and it's a way of highlighting the contributions that the South Asians have made to our society. And also, I think it's important, and we all feel that it's important as educators that we are um, commended and accepted for who we are and our identity. Absolutely. And now you said you were working on the K to three yes. area? Yes, mm -hmm. with Rapinder Rai, who is a um, kindergarten teacher in Abbotsford. Excellent. And uh, what got you, when you both were talking about it, what were you most excited about? Um, We've never seen any lessons based on um, South Asian um, with from the South Asian community. So knowing that we were the first ones who were going to be pioneering lessons such as this was um, it was almost fulfilling. Like as a as a I grew up in Williams Lake, uh, BC, and um, I kind of sort of felt like an outsider. So this and, and working in Surrey and seeing that there's so many children like me um, who can feel 
that they are part of the community. They are not outsiders. They have something to contribute um, was really meaningful. And um, I was just, we were both just really excited to be working on this together. Mm, I'm really, um, thanks for sharing that. Um, you know, you mentioned in Williams Lake being the only student. I think that these resources aren't just for those, those areas where there's large populations of South Asian Canadians, like in Surrey, but they are for schools like the ones up in Williams Lake, where there are one or two students because of how important it is to see yourself and to be reflected in that. Um, I've had feedback on that. Um, I have an outreach kit where there's a, a piece inside that's in written in uh, Mandarin. And a teacher once emailed me in the middle of the class to say, how amazing it was because here was this student who was never speaking up, who never talked, who is now talking to the whole class and reading out loud to them and sharing their history with them. And she said that prompt, that one prompt, that one sort of permission to be given to a student to share their culture and heritage can be really impactful. So that's some of the goals for this material. Um, what we're going to do is give you a closer look at some of these activity plans that we're working on. And uh, what you're going to see today is summarized versions. We wanted to keep it manageable. We didn't think it was very fair to give you long activity plans to review or to look out. So we're going to be putting people into breakout rooms and you're going to get a link to something called Jamboard. And on Jamboard, you'll be able to read the activities and you'll be able to make notes and even suggestions. Um, so it might spark something for you. Maybe there's a book uh, or a film or a resource you can think of that would be a good support for what you're looking at. After you've had chance in the breakout rooms, we're going to have a debrief at the end. And there'll also be an invitation to give more feedback um, directly to Open Schools BC and Shayla. And we'll give you her email at the end. But before we send you into the breakout rooms, I want to quickly demonstrate the Jamboard, and Dill is going to walk you through a little bit more of that first activity plan. So I'm going to open my link. Yay! I'm going to put it here on the, on the screen. Oh, why does it change? Let me just try one more time. It was working. I'm going to see if I can share. Here we go. Okay. That's my Jamboard. Oh, it looked right. Okay, so here's our Jamboard. If you've never used Jamboard before, you just navigate using um, these little arrows at the top. We can see here there's 17 pages. So here's the first page, the name of our work. And then you just scroll through. So each group you're going to be assigned to one of these activity plans. So here's, here's the summary of the activity plan for the games we play. Before Dill walks us through a little bit of what it says here, here is the page you'll work on. So you just, the activity you read, and then here's where you can give some feedback. And we're asking you to think about what do you appreciate about the activity plans? What would you like to see done differently? And what would be a barrier to using these resources in your classroom? To work, to make those comments, I find the best tool here is just the sticky notes. You can open up a sticky note. You can change the color if you want to. Let's go with saffron. <laughs> and then you can type your feedback. Type, and then you're going to save your feedback here on the screen. So just tap, and you can move them. You can sort them. You can make them bigger. Uh, you can go, oh, I don't want that anymore. You can delete it. So there's lots of ways to share your feedback on the Jamboard. You can also use this typing tool where you just open up again and type here. So there's uh, different ways to share and to put your pieces. So again, I'll delete that so it's ready for our group. And I'm gonna go back to the activity plan. And Dill, this is the one of the activities uh, you were talking about. Do you, let's just walk through it as an example. Okay, so games we play. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this was created by Rupinder Rai and myself. Um, we created this first by referring to our BC curriculum for social studies. Um, for K to three, we found inquiry as a common thread um, within the big ideas, um, as well as learning about one's identity, especially in K. And then um, as the students get older, they start to learn about others' identity. Um, we wanted to integrate our lesson plans with other curricular ideas or areas. So after brainstorming, we decided to create a lesson which integrated personal identity and physical education. Um, 
as a teacher librarian and Rapinder being a K teacher, we thought the perfect springboard would be a book related to South Asian culture. So um, we suggest first starting off with a book. Um, one of the suggestions is Finding Ulm. Um, it's an excellent book, but this book is simply just a suggestion. Um, you can also find this book as a read aloud on some internet sites. Uh, it's a book about a child learning to meditate from um, from uh, her grandfather, and it discusses mental health. So it hits on social social emotional learning as well. Um, when we created this lesson, however, we did suggest several other books that could be used. Um, you can't see it in this snapshot, but I'm sure that it will be once it's published, it, they will be up as well. Um, but any book that uh, where you're where a child is learning from an adult uh, would be perfect. Um, uh, from here, the lesson uh, moves on to a class discussion about the book and then eventually a discussion about what the students have learned from their parents, grandparents, or others in the community. Um, and then from here, the lesson would move on to watching a video of children in India playing Bante, which is marbles, followed by a discussion about the game. And here, uh, the children are learning about others um, in their community um, or even outside of their community. And and then learning about self and inquiry is part of the lesson. And, and so what they're going to do after this is they will research a game. Um, maybe they can ask their parents or their grandparents or somebody within their community to show them a game that they have not played before, and then they can share it with their class. Thank you, Dill. Now, Shayla from Open School BC is here. Shayla, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, to turn on your microphone. Shayla just went through this activity. Uh, is there anything you want to add or tips or suggestions before we head out into our breakout rooms? No, I don't think so. I think the one thing is, you know, these are really high level snapshots. So what we heard, um, I just did this presentation at the Social Studies Association Conference. And what we really heard is, you know, that you have a lot of unanswered questions just by looking at this. And so we encourage you to write those questions down and know that we are thinking about them, but also know that there's a lot more that goes beyond this one slide. Um, we didn't want you, as Kim said, to have to read a six page Word document um, in this short time frame. And so just kind of keeping that piece in mind. And the only other piece is um, it's, I think, easiest if the groups just want to decide which one they want to talk about. We had in our last room, um, everyone ended up talking about the same one and it worked OK. <laughs> um, but just finding that a lot of people um, in the social studies is primarily 10 to 12. And I don't know what the uh, demographic of this room is, but um, I think it should be okay if you guys want to just kind of pick what you want to talk about and feel free to float around between them, review all of them. And um, the only other thing is a lot of resources were shared in the other conference. And so if you have those, please put them on here too. We love resources. We love links. We love other websites and things like that. Great. So again, just looking at the Jamboard, um, Shayla has put the link in the chat. When you go into your breakout room, you can follow that link uh, on a screen. So if one of you has two screens and you can you share your screen in a breakout room, Shayla? Yeah. Yes. So if one of you wants to share or if you all want to just be on there and looking and discussing, that's great. And as Shayla, Shayla was just saying, you can scroll through to see the difference. So here's grade four, six, grade seven, nine. Uh, great, another grade seven, nine, awesome. And 10, 12. So there's food, there's math, there's, uh, uh, e I'm forgetting the uh, acronym for the museum exhibit one, uh, design thinking. So there's a bunch of different ones to have a look at. So Shayla, let's yes. launch those breakout rooms. Perfect, so I'm going to open breakout maybe, rooms. Sorry, maybe I should just ask, anyone have any questions before we send you off into the breakout rooms? We will pop in and see how you're doing. So you're not going to be totally alone. And I think for timing, we've got about 10 minutes. Does that sound like enough time, um, Shayla, based on what people were doing in the last group? We have until 12, right? Yes. So we'll give them 15. Okay. And I think that should be perfect. Perfect. So 15 minutes. Uh, and a question, if we had a list of South Asian books, there are book lists for every activity plan. Is that right, Shayla? 
for most of them, not all of them. Um, some of them aren't as connected. Um, we haven't created a separate book. Yeah, there's several um, book lists that we actually used as references for ours. Um, and so that's actually a helpful note that that's something we can include on the final website that we create is, you know, links to those book lists because um, there's tons out there and um, most of them are better than what we could probably create. Awesome. All right. Um, Perfect. So um, just a heads up to Dill. It does look like it's going to put you in a room, but you should still be able to move rooms. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and open these uh, for 15 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. Feel free to leave your cameras on. We're going to have a discussion anyway. So it's nice to see you if you're comfortable with that. We were popping into different rooms and it seemed folks were, were busy and the the Jamboard's got lots of great stuff on there. Shayla, might I ask you to share um, the sec this uh, sort of debrief and feedback session? Yes. Right. Um, so we're gonna start by just launching a bit of a poll. So we're gonna start there and then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna launch a poll with just two questions um, about what you guys talked about um, and how you're feeling, and then we'll go from there. Oh, got over the halfway mark there. You know, there's a lot more options in this one than the <laughs> earlier one. A little bit more reading. 64%. So we'll give it just another couple of 30 seconds or so. Great. I haven't seen it increase. So let us, maybe we'll share that. Do you want to share that one and discuss? Or have five that? more seconds. You got five seconds. I just, I always worry about cutting people off. So you're good. Three, <laughs> two, and pull. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and share this one just so people can kind of see how others are feeling. And so um, kind of all over the place answers, nothing too surprising there. Um, I think it is really rewarding to see that people are excited that there is this focus on South Asian Canadian history, culture, and heritage. Uh, that is part of the motivation of coming to these conferences. It's just generating that excitement. Um, we obviously don't have the resource ready to go just yet, but we're hoping that you'll hold on to that excitement for a few more months um, until we uh, launch in March. Oh, I lost the, oh, stop sharing. There we go. Um, so interested in any kind of thoughts or conversations that came up, anything that maybe permeated the conversation? Um, we've got just a couple of minutes. I'm just looking through the, the chat. I'm. I'm noticing the comment, give younger students the headline or topic sentence and reflect on that rather than reading articles as a group. Um, yeah, our concern was that, uh, especially with grade fours and with COVID being what it is, we've got a lot of lower uh, readers right now. So mm -hmm. groups may not necessarily be able to successfully read and understand the articles on their own. So um, rather they look at the headline or the um, main topic sentence and kind of get some ideas around that and maybe have a conversation as a class just because it might be a bit too much for them at that, that age. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great point. Yeah, that links also, I think, to another comment here is making sure you have uh, UDL options for students to participate. So the uh, universal design uh, for learning. So and that's really, are there plans for that, Shayla? Is, are all the lesson plans going to have a UDL? So the... Again, you know, this is really the big snapshot of it. I heard you guys, a couple of you have talked about that as well. And what we've really tried to hone in on as we develop these activity plans is having lots of options and different ways to kind of navigate um, while also making it so that the teacher can kind of adapt it as needed. Um, my experience working with the Ministry of Education has been 
that it's rare that a teacher kind of takes something and uses it exactly as is because it's never a one size fits all. And so, you know, we've really even embraced that in terms of we're going to provide them in Word documents, like move them around, take pieces out, do as you need to do. And that also transfer to, you know, if there's something about your class that's maybe unique and doesn't fit with what we're doing, adapt it and remix it and make it work for you. With that said, we are kind of doing our due diligence to make sure they meet a lot of the kind of basic recommendations of UDL principles. Great. Uh, I have this, that sparked a question for me. Um, are folks here using Google Classroom? Seeing a bit of no and yeah, a little of both. <laughs> Okay, I'm just wondering, I saw something the other day about integrating Google Classroom onto websites so it's easy to download images and pieces onto your, right, directly to your classrooms. Um, I just wondered if something like that would be useful. So realizing we just have a couple of minutes, I'm gonna just share a couple of things and then I'll open the floor back up. So we are looking for people to help pilot these activity plans in their entirety, not just this one little slide of information. And so I'm gonna post a couple of things in the chat. So one, this is the website where Saffron Threads will live. Um, the title itself kind of warms my heart and brings me joy thinking about the connectedness and kind of the idea of threading across this really broad and diverse culture. Um, on that website, there is a link to contact me if you're interested, but I'm also gonna pop my email in the chat. And so if you have even feedback from today or thoughts or resources, or you are interested in piloting these in your class, please feel free to reach out. Um, there are a couple of activity plans that weren't included on um, here today. And so if you're interested, but you know maybe one of these doesn't really fit what you're doing in your class, feel free to still reach out. Uh, we will be piloting over the next couple of months leading up to launching in March 2022. Uh, so I invite you to share their um, to bookmark the website link, that's where it will live, but also feel free to share it with colleagues. Um, people don't have to be here today to sign up to pilot. Um, if we get an overwhelming response, we might have to make some decisions, but um, right now our doors are wide open and we are really looking forward to connecting with people um, who are in the classroom and can make uh, some good use of these and give us some feedback ahead of time. Can I can I ask Sheila how Sheila, how onerous would feedback be if I said yeah I want to pilot it yeah um, what are what kind of feedback are you looking for so the hope would be that you could take the activity plan and use either part of it or all of it you know whatever fits well in your classroom for piloting we are hoping they'll be used kind of as is to an extent. Um, with you know acknowledging the differences um the expectation would be you would just use it in your regular classroom um and then just kind of tell me how it goes so i'm not looking for a full-on report i'm not looking for a 10-page you know survey to be filled out i just want to know what worked and what didn't um and so realistically it would be one or two of your class periods um and then a little bit of time to send it to uh feedback to us um and we're hopeful that it wouldn't take time outside of what you're doing at school. Um, that is really the biggest goal is we don't wanna create extra work for you. We're hoping that in a way this will make maybe things a little easier. Maybe we'll save you some lesson planning time. Terrific. Any questions before we can wrap up and end the session? Are there questions about the time commitment for this? How many hours a week? I think you were saying is it can really just be fit in. It's not yeah. know, described hours or time. Trying to keep it minimal. Um, I know everyone's busy, and I know a lot of teachers will have already planned their semesters a long time ago. So also acknowledging that you know for a lot of people this might not fit in, um, but hopefully we'll get some interest and you know maybe find some people who will help us champion this when it launches in March. Great. So March 2022, there'll be more news, hopefully shared widely uh, throughout the school district. So you'll hear about it again. Thank you all so much for your time. We'll be going back to the Jamboard and looking at the resources there. Uh, this is uh, this is a good time. We have time to make additions and suggestions to, to the lessons. So thank you so much for your input. Uh, and thank you in advance for, for, using, uh, for using. A question up again about the dual language books. 
Can we promise there will be lists of dual language books, books that are in both South Asian uh, languages and Canadian or English language? Sorry. I don't know if that's something we can commit to at this point. It is something that we're hopeful for moving forward. Um, one of the challenges is, again, the number of languages and also trying to um, capture uh, the complexity of that. Um, one of the things that we can look into is even generating a list of some options. Um, I'll see what we can do with that, but if not, I will add it to the list of kind of phase two. Yeah, or places to buy them if folks have suggestions. I know Orca Books, uh, which is a children's book publisher here in Victoria, have amazing resources, educator guides, uh, and books in, I know, First Nations languages. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about South Asian Canadian languages, but possibly. So check them out as a starting point. Yeah, and any of the schools that have Punjabi classes, for example, or the Dasmesh School in Abbotsford might be a good place to connect if you are really keen about books in um, South Asian or Punjabi languages. Um, but other than that, uh, it hasn't been the focus just because there are so many languages. I see some nodding yet. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Well, great tips. Uh, and again, thanks everyone for your time. Have a wonderful lunch and a wonderful Pro-D day. Enjoy the rest of your conference and thanks for spending time with us.